Demystifying English. Interrogative pronouns uncovered. Hello, language enthusiasts. Welcome back to another episode in our series on English language learning. Today, we'll be delving into an often overlooked but incredibly useful aspect of English grammar, interrogative pronouns. By the end of this video, you'll have a clearer understanding of what they are and how to use them effectively in your everyday English. Let's start at the beginning. Interrogative pronouns are those special words we use to ask questions. They are who, whom, which, what, and whose. Each one serves a unique purpose and allows us to extract different kinds of information in our questions. When it comes to their function, interrogative pronouns stand in for the thing or person that we want to know about. They perform the role of placeholders until we get our answer. 1. Who and whom. We use these pronouns to ask about people. While who is for subjects, whom is used for objects. For example, who ate the last piece of pizza? And whom are you waiting for? 2. Which. This is used when we have a limited, known set of choices or options. For instance, which is your favorite, tea or coffee? 3. What. We utilize, what, to inquire about things, actions, or ideas, especially when we have unlimited choices. An example could be, what is your favorite book? 4. Whose. This pronoun helps us ask about possession. For example, whose bag is this? It's easy to confuse interrogative pronouns with interrogative determiners. While they can look the same, their functions are different. Remember, interrogative pronouns replace the noun. However, interrogative determiners modify the noun and are always followed by the noun. For example, in the sentence, whose book is this? Whose is an interrogative determiner modifying book. If we say, whose is this? Whose is an interrogative pronoun replacing the noun. And there you have it, a quick tour of interrogative pronouns in English. Hopefully, this video sheds some light on their role and how to use them. Remember, the key to mastering these is practice. So, try incorporating them into your daily English usage, and before you know it, they'll become second nature. Stay tuned for our next lesson, where we'll explore another fascinating aspect of English grammar. Until then, keep practicing, and happy learning!